fish taking Take sound effect. <laughs> um, they concentrate on it. Just okay. So that's a good question. I'm going to leave to you guys. Of uh, is that ship what you guys want? Because I'm cool with it. If that's the the, the pick you guys want. Uh, I think that was the consensus. I think. Um, I was I was asking if we could get the armored one with some missiles that looked a little better for the same rarity. They're actually they both have the missiles. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't I don't really see the difference, and when you look at them, they're pretty much the same thing. So. <laughs> uh, I think it's just uh, depends on what resource it came out of, whether they call it armored or not. Okay. Slow firing on the on the missiles. Sorry about that. So, yep, if that's the baby you want, then, yep, that's the new baby you get. Well, that was weird. Headset decided it up and just, like, disconnect on me for some reason. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> like, like, why am I not hearing anybody anymore? <laughs> <laughs> because we all went silent. Right? So... So, the c important question is, what name do you want to give her? Well, that one we still got to work on. <laughs> <laughs> so, pass encumbrance is much lighter, much lower than the other one, than our GX1. It's only 80 versus 200, but armament is uh, much more survivable. It's almost and like the YV929 is supposed to take a better beating. Yeah, well. Okay, this is kind of long, but what about Chemo Nimbus? But, I mean, I'm fine with it. You know, those are the rain clouds? Mm hmm. Sure. It works. Because with this, we can definitely rain down some hell on people. Yes, we basically go, we lose hauling capacity, but we go from one tiny gun to 
two Ford triple mounted light blaster cannons, one turret mounted uh, ion cannon, and two forward concussion missile launchers and one aft mounted concussion missile launcher. So can definitely bring a little more hurt than the old ship could. Do we have to turn the old one in? No. Okay. So if we need the carrying capacity, we now have the carrying capacity and a cover ship or an escort. That's what they're called. Escort. Now, the question is, what would you do with your other ship in the meantime? Uh, it's probably stored at uh, home base there. The new home base. The question is, at the moment, you don't have a new home base yet. Are you having right, some so. NPCs conveniently fly it for you? I suppose, but yeah, I thought well, we had. Well, we can have what's his name fly it. He's not here, right? He's not a pilot. You can totally oh. trust the ground pounder who's never touched a joystick to fly your cruiser for you. I was gonna say, yeah, he's not <laughs> a pilot. <laughs> Though so, I thought we were like kind of based off the mud planet or whatever it was for right now. Remember, we had to evacuate that. Uh. Thanks to Sobek's epic betrayal, you guys had to immediately mobilize an evacuation while you're doing your your rescue mission. Mm. So yeah, so they some schmucks would have had to fly it while we flew out the Y wings. So mm -hmm. so Anea, just a heads up, uh, I sent you a message on Facebook. Yeah, I saw it. I was reading it. <clears throat> Are you going to tell the party about that saved message in your memory core? Yeah. Because, like, obviously he wants us to know about it. So, so how, are, how are you having the crew come together? Because, you know, your Mandalorian, of course, is going to have some uh, conversations with the higher command. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, if he was here, I would... Uh, I would no, wait, he can totally still be in the room, right? So I want to, like, uh, usher everybody in and uh, say that uh, I have a message from our old commander. <laughs> um, and it looks like he wants everyone to know. So um, should we say it just with the four of us around, or do you want to go tell Pappy, too? Well, do you want to tell Pappy? Well, I, at the moment, am a little scared to talk to Peppy. I mean, you can totally yeah. tell it to your team first and then share yeah. or ask the team. Yep. Yeah, probably better to tell the team and then we go from there and figure out what yeah. what to share beyond. Okay. So I'm um, uh, letting everyone know I have uh, some dyslexia issues. So sometimes it doesn't come out right. Um, the message is... Sorry for turning on you. And a little rebellion. hollow of Sobek pops up out of her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry for turning on you and the rebellion, but this was my way to get my family back. Family is extremely important on Malastar. Stare? Ooh. Uh, we have a saying, life is beautiful. It's about giving and it's about family. I had to give up on the cause for my family. Do not give up on the cause. If you don't have your own family, then make this group your family. And transmission. Aww. Yeah. As Sobex, you know, a little tear pops up in Sobex's eyes, he turns off the button. Yeah. <laughs> Sad droid noises. <laughs> mm. Okay then. Well, we can deal with that at some point, but I don't know that Peppy needs to know immediately unless he's planning on doing something. 
So you're totally yeah. like, nah, Pappy doesn't need to know. <laughs> he has more important things at the moment. He's currently got a flotilla running in space, not knowing where they should land. <laughs> They're totally going over the books to see, you know, what exactly Sobek could have betrayed, you know, betrayed information wise. Did Pappy ever find out about me being the weird little droid that I am? Well, that that's a question to ask your team of what information the team gave away. I was asking. <laughs> the whole, everybody. Who knows? Uh, I hadn't told anybody. I don't think Sobex had said anything, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what did you tell everyone? Um... Well, Sobex told me not to tell anybody, but he told the doctor, right? Right? <laughs> I think I think he told you. Mm, I don't recall. I don't think so. I do believe Sobek kept it between the two of you. Did he? Okay, I I apparently have a weird little memory that he had to get help from somebody to access <laughs> my little brain. He did, and that's why you were kidnapped. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. So if you look at the uh, bottom of the page there, I put the uh, ship that you got there, the armed freighter. Nice. The CV-929 armed freighter. Now the question is, who's going to put the ship on their character sheet? Uh, that's what I got to figure out. Where is it at? Uh, you mean stat-wise? I just put a picture up. Oh, picture, okay. Of the YV? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Yeah, I gotta figure that out, because this only supports, like, one. The sheets, I think. Which kind of sucks. Uh, vehicle sheet. I don't know if, I don't think you can... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think you can have add more than one of each type of ship. So I don't know how to work that. Um, so tend to, tend to do more Y wing or you could uh, not Y wing. Totally, just more, use uh, the planetary tab for it. Hmm. Possible. Uh, yeah, the weapon stats don't stack right. Yeah, plus I got my chicken walkers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I got that loaded there. <laughs> okay, so, you know, you guys keep that secret meeting to your guys' self where you see that Sobek betrayed the, t the rebellion and the team for the cause of his family. Yeah, for right now. I wonder what <laughs> dirty Imperial promise to help him with his family in, in returns for betraying the rebellion. Mm. And you know, as you guys are called to the mission briefing room, all of a sudden you realize Pappy is curious about uh, why he betrayed you guys too. See, that's kind of why, kind of why I wanted to know if you would tell Pappy or not. <laughs> well, we're going to come right out, but I mean, if he's inquiring... Because he's got a mission to help get that information. Yeah, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, if he's inquiring, I would say we would probably tell him on the down low on the side. Okay, well, he's got uh, just you guys, his, his, his military aid. And uh, he's got a, a mission set for you to help see if we can secure that information. Secure the information. Well, what? Secure what information? Yeah. Uh, like, what exactly he told the Empire about the rebellion? Uh, yep, ex exactly. Exactly. 
he has an old trick that the Separatists used to use during the the Clone Wars to sneak information off the uh, Hollow Net. Mm. And he's got a feeling that with just your crew, this this is something that he could make make work just right. Okay. Well, I mean, because we don't know what all he gave, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we could still do the mission, but, um, I mean, if we're pursuing just so they, you know, I don't have a problem telling Pappy, but uh, your, your guys' thought? Most people understand family and the being able to rest. Actually, wait a second. Oh. I think we should tell Pappy because if we can do something to save his family, we now have a spy inside the rebels that they trust. You mean inside the Empire? Or inside the, right, inside the yes. Empire that they trust. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, as much as anybody trusts a double agent. <laughs> Says the spy guy. Right? <laughs> Freaking laden with spies. The only one loyal. <laughs> Damn it, I'm just a doctor, not a, spy, a spy guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you know, if you don't want to say anything right now, that's fine. Um, you going to clear the pool, by the way? Ah, uh, yes, yes, I will. Might as well get that out of the way. <laughs> Since it'll be a sad, sad little dice pool. And I forced an update, so it should be on everyone as 2-2. Two, 2-2? Two. Two, two? Yep. It means zero, 0-0? Zero. That too. I, I have 0-0. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, See, there's the two. Now somebody give me the other two. There's the ah. two, too. I am calling this stuff tonight. <laughs> oh, oops. And I apparently Rigor is using one of yours up. <laughs> no doubt. I'll Just give it help. back. Thank you. So now we just need Rigor to give... Oh. See? I'm good. good job, I Jake. So four light side versus two dark side. Yeah, the true loyalist in the questionable droid. <laughs> I mean, um... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I wanted to tell you guys about why I went to Sobex in the first place. <coughs> so why did you do that? Um, so I, on our little vacation, uh, did the left and uh, thought I was getting... Um, my ship detailed and it turns out it was a beacon to go back to the Empire and I found out there that I was a sleeper agent spy person and when I found out I came home and told Sobex and then he kidnapped me so hey yeah. there's the cliff notes <laughs> nice very nice <laughs> so we need to clean you up again I f- am. Am I fully She's, good She is now? fully repaired. Yeah, you are fully repaired. Don't worry about the narrative stuff that happened to you. By this time in the game, you are fully repaired and back up to snuff. Yay! Cool. Which is why um, Pappy's ready for you to go on a mission. Yeah, no, that's fine. And uh, for the ship, if you want to, I guess, create a character and just I'll throw it up that we all can control. Mm. And then I'll load the stats on it, I guess. That way, depending on who's playing, whatever, it could be accessible by everybody. And we'll just name that as the ship. And what did you want to name the ship? Um. What was it, Kay? Oh. <clears throat> Boom. Hold on. <laughs> My mouth isn't working right. It's okay. You now have control of the ship, so you can rename the ship. How about that? See how I play? 
So it is the ship. <laughs> and y'all should be able to see the ship. Yep. Um, the ship. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Finally popped over there. Cool. And be mindful if people are changing tabs, you're changing tabs on each other. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I'll. Let's just, let's just call it the Nimbus. That way we can actually pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> it's still rain, but... Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'll load everything in real quick on it So while we're, while we're rolling. Cool, that definitely works. Okay, so you guys are given a mission, and uh, Pappy's basically running through, you know, ages past missions that they did where they call this the old bait-and-switch. Where uh, you find a place that has a nearby listening post, and one of your Y wings or whatever ship you're using that has torpedoes will have its torpedoes replaced with a buoy. That when you get within the area of the surveillance buoy that's already in place, you take that buoy out. You got to do it super fast, or else it might not work. Then you replace it with your replacement dummy buoy. And that'll help connect you to the local listening station's frequencies. Uh -huh. And then once you do that, you can uh, either see if you can hack in through the buoy or go planet side with implanted information that you're using from the buoy. You know, basically sending false landing co you know, codes or whatnot. Okay. And he's showing you like this replay of like five different missions where they did the same thing and it was totally successful each time. <laughs> totally successful. Does that sound like it'll still work or has technology changed enough where they'd be able to tell the fake? Uh, give me a computer's role to find out. Let me set your difficulty. And let me give you an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got it in there for you. As now we have balance in the force. Okay, so you think that uh, these these separatists are some sly freaking devils because you've never, ever, ever heard of any tactic like that. And immediately you're just like tapping your chin doing that whole, would that even work? And, and immediately you pop off with, you sly dogs, you pulled the old uh, shell game. And, of course, Pappy kind of gives you this knowing look like, uh-huh, as he starts tossing <laughs> around the, the, the fob he uses for the hollow projector it, amongst his three real hands and his cybernetic hand, and then he holds his hands out like, pick a hand. <laughs> and, and which one of his hands do you pick, Kay? Uh, the upper left. And immediately he he shows all three of his organic hands and they're empty and you realize it's been in his cybernetic hand the whole time. See, that's what I was thinking. I was actually thinking uh, the cybernetic. <laughs> the one that he's not, you know, tossing back and forth. <laughs> cool. Okay. And just to answer your question, Scott, I texted you back about the Garrett. Oh, I actually found the answer. If it has a name, it doesn't count as improvised. Yep. Okay, so the plan is for you guys to swoop in. We've got the coordinates, but I'm sure that Rigger will uh, do a better job than our astrogation techs in getting you closer to that location where you guys will have roughly 15 seconds to disable that uh, beacon and then 
launch the, the, the said decoy as he kind of juggles the fob in his hand to show his point and make sure that it broadcasts the proper check-in signal, which is supposed to broadcast every 22.287 seconds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's almost like it's machine precise. Mm. Almost. And uh, doing that will give uh, K said uh, time to access the system. Cool. Hopefully before the Imperial ship went to hyperspace, it transmitted to that listening post as Imperial procedures dictate the inf any information that they'd received so far. Mm. <laughs> cool. All right. So the ship we want to use Y wings or take our new ship on a maiden voyage since it has uh, uh, rockets as well. Mm. And temporarily your it's got to be a weapon that's got missiles because the buoy launcher is going to replace those missiles temporarily. Right. Well, this has uh, two forward mounted twin concussion missile launchers, so We'd still have one forward missile launcher and one loaded with the buoy, mm -hmm. and then the re the rear uh, missile, or you mount the rear as the buoy, but then that takes away our only aft uh, weapon. So your backside would be exposed. Yeah. <clears throat> Because I just realized you're not on the same window I'm looking at. No, no. Not if you're... James, I have a question. What's your question? My Y-Wing has a complete communication suite, right? Mm-hmm. You've got that modification. So instead of shooting a missile at the buoy, can I use my Y-Wing as an intermediary and then just replace the buoy? No, it, it has to be a communications buoy and conveniently the Rebel Rebellion has captured one. Technically, oh, okay. they've blown up five and they rebuilt one out of the pieces. Your communications suite is great, but it will not simulate the buoy's information. Okay. So that's why you would have to deploy the, the, the buoy. Plus, we don't want to necessarily have to stay there. Mm -hmm. well, no, no, no. We just that way we wouldn't have to worry about twenty three point seven seconds. Right. Well, it, it would be even worse if you used your ship, because then you, as a person, would have to manually hit the button. It's much nicer to have the automated system up and running, and you just to do an average computer check to turn it on at the right time. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So we're using the new guy? New ship? Up to you guys. I think so. Alright. Alright, who's gonna fly it? Um I don't know. We need basically a pilot and then basically a two different gunners. Um, I guess I can pilot can I pilot? Central <laughs> Yeah, you're a pilot. It uses yeah. pilot space, so if you can pilot a Y-Wing, you can pilot a cargo ship. Okay, yeah. I just didn't know if I needed, like, a little... My, uh, my piloting is two yellow and one green. Mine's three yellow with minus two black. Uh, piloting... Um, three yellow. Two yellow and one green, so it sounds like... Uh, what's, your, what's yours? Three yellow? So three yellow, no... Oh, and um, there's a 3B on it. Three so. blue. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so slightly better on the, with the added blues. Yeah. Cool. That's and fine. it does have a handling of negative one, so it's a blue dice for the brick that it is. Yeah. That armor plating comes with a price. 
Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like you're going to have rigor, pilot. Sure. <laughs> Pi have rigor, pilot, until she gets shot out of the chair and then take her place. <laughs> well, luckily we all can pilot, so... Mm -hmm. It's all about the backups. Okay, so of course, you know, you, you, you basically are having this nice cooperative. You're asking each other. Pappy's proud of this, seeing that you have no commander, and he kind of likes this. In that case, I think Quinn should be in charge of this mission. Because you're asking good questions, Quinn. And Kay, you need to be on point with that, with that buoy handoff. Because yeah. I know your computer skills are more than up to up to snuff. Yep. We'll be good. We got this. So, I mean, okay. it would be nice to have a couple more people on the crew, but we got this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Currently, with the evacuation in process, until we find a new home, we'll be a little short-staffed. But remember... A rebellion is run on hope. <laughs> Sometimes needs blaster gas and food, but mostly hope. <laughs> so go ahead and uh, take some time to make the planning that you need. Well, will the technicians replace your uh, and you're, you're wanting the rear launcher or no? Um, no, let's do one of the front. We'll have one front still and one back at that point. Yeah. Well, you're having your front missile tubes replaced with a buoy launcher. Oh. And this is nice because it's got the uh, ion uh, plus regular plus missiles. So It's got lots of options. Yeah. Sweet. Forward. As, as he kind of scratches his head doing the whole, where did we come up with this ship? <laughs> uh, we acquired it on the way off the planet. <laughs> <laughs> as he's like, and may the force be with you. <laughs> Always. And with That's you. <laughs> As, you know, he basically, you know, lets you guys know you have time to do it. The techs are going to require, like, two hours to swap out the parts. And then, right. you know, you get the little technician comes up and gives you the basic rundown of you just need one of the gunners to have access to this. And they can deploy it from either of the gunner locations. Yeah, the way it looks like in the cockpit there, it's, like, basically two gunner stations that operate all the guns. So. Mm -hmm. No having to crawl through the ship and anything like crazy like that. And uh, while, while you're at it, if uh, you need any of the weapons, you know, and they, they give you the basic rundown of the ship's weapon complements and the fact that they've got the engine all tweaked and tuned up. So that way everything should be perfectly fine for this mission. Good luck and may the force be with you. <laughs> Everybody's all forcey today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all uh, like worried about all the spies and shit that they've had to deal with. Right. Everybody's gotten that uh, training course where they're like, "This is how you recognize an imperial sleeper agent." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you guys are given the plans, you do have a chance if Rigor would like to roll her astrogation now with a blue dice, as opposed to on what? the. Wow, look at those getting spent so quickly. I like it. <laughs> All right, ready? Yep, ready, ready. Wow, so uh, you have a really good roll. Uh-huh. How would you like to use all that crunchy goodness? Um. You know the buoy is basically floating in space. It does have an automated defense system, but it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. The only thing I can think of is that we get there and do the job and leave. But, uh, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> like, real quick, all simple, 
but that's not going to happen. Well, you have a uh, triumph. I mean, there is a triumph there. <laughs> there that's, yeah, so... That's not outside um, the boundaries of what you can ask for. Cool. Okay. Sorry. Not used to triumphs here on me. Uh, so... Wow. <laughs> I've seen you roll triumph before. It's fine. It's been a while. Uh, so, can we get there and their defense is glitched or turned off for some reason. Okay. So it's good. Are, are we coming a blind spot? I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. You can come in in such a way that their defenses, you know, just happen to be powered down and it'll take a round to turn them on. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I'll take that for the triumph. What do you want for those three advantages? Um, we get there in enough time to, I don't know, assess out everything that we need to, I guess. Okay, so so you basically do it in, in, in with the quickness. Yeah. Okay. Now, how close to the target are you wanting to get? Because with those three successes, you're going to be doing it very quick. Ooh. Uh, I'd... Hmm. Um, the three successes. Uh, can we get in range where it would just be a nice, clean, no problem? So within blaster range? Uh, is that good? Everybody? Well, that's close yeah. enough to shoot it. Yeah. Yeah. We want to yeah. be able to do it as quickly as possible, so... Okay. I mean, it there all comes go. down to, do you want to be within blaster range or missile range? And since uh, one of your missile launchers is out of commission... Mm-hmm. Um, probably blast, blast, blaster better. Okay. Um, everything we got on this ship is... Um, let's see. Do, 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 reach. Uh, what are the missiles? Uh, missiles are... Uh, the missiles are short range, so everything's short that we have on this ship. Okay. So there is no medium missiles. These are... All short. All, uh... Oh, wait, no. The missiles are short. Everything... The blasters... Are all close. All are close, Yeah. Okay, so it would be better if we were in close range, right? To actually get the buoy to the place yep. without interference? Well, to be able to shoot the stuff that we need to destroy, yes. Yeah. Then yeah, that. Okay. So you've got your coordinates on your little data spike, so you're ready to run to the ship. The technicians give you the double chime of the klaxon saying your ship is ready. So you guys are coming. Go run Sparky. to the ship. You're bringing Sparky. Yep, because he can man a position as well. Woo! Sparky can uh, co-pilot. Yay! <laughs> co-pilot. Our hands, our lives are in the hands of the droids. <laughs> <laughs> That'll free us up for the for the gunning. So. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, as I'm looking for a picture of the ship real quick. It's not the easiest little bugger to find a picture of. Ah, I found a good picture. Okay, you have three. Oh, that's got to be me. What's that pulling from? Uh, let's see. What's my gunnery? Yeah, why? Oh, you must have upgrades loaded up or something. Uh, I do currently. You want me? To, want me to take them out real quick? Yeah, just trying to test everything. The dice pool is clear. All right. Let's see what we get. Um. So two and one, that's good. Okay, on the missiles. Nope, that's still 
Probably it's because I'm clicking it, maybe. But I loaded K as the character. So it should be pulling from him, right? Uh, did you make sure to pull uh, pull from K and then put gunnery? No, I got gunnery. I got K in for that gun or for that missile. I'm wondering if it's because I'm clicking it. So go ahead and go into the Nimbus there, K, real quick, and click on the forward-mounted twin concussion missile that has K loaded as the uh, um, person, be the first of the missile launchers. It says that uh, you're, you have it. Oh, no, that's the uh, blaster. Yeah, okay, I have the blaster there, there, yeah. Okay. As you guys are doing this big shakedown in the vehicle. Right. So you should just be able to click the dice over on the right side there. Okay, I did. Uh, I don't... Oh, it did. Okay. So it's still pulling two and one, but what's your gunnery? Uh, my gunnery is two and one. Oh, okay. So it, it is reading right. Okay. Cool. That's the important thing. Yeah. All right. So that looks good. I'm adding pilot. Uh... As you guys are getting this shakedown going. And everybody should be able to see the bubbles and the hit points and strain on the ship, right? As soon as I put you in the right tab to see it? Um, probably. Mm. And you should all be able to move. Yeah, I see. And I move I'm it. Moving and pasting on the main page, too. It's an intimidating looking shit. No, it's a yeah, it's a cool looking ship. It almost looks it, like although it's... it does look like a flying brick. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. You don't get that armor without the bad but handling. But it's our flying brick. So of course, with your amazing astrogation courses, you can totally drop your ship within close range, which is within this yellow circle down at the bottom. Since I have you on that map, I might as well leave, just leave you on that map. <laughs> so you guys go there. She puts in the coordinates on her data spike. You slide it to hyperspace. It's going to be just a really quick six-hour jump. And that's six hours with the time shaved off. So that's, that's a really nice uh, job with her astrogation. And what did you want for your three advantage, by the way? Because we got you there quick because you had extra successes. And it just so happens to have its weapons power down right now, possibly for a maintenance re rerun. What did you want for your three advantage on the astrogation? Uh, what do I want? What, can I use uh. the advantage again? Oh, it's been a minute. Uh, you can use that for aiming, right? Like extra, uh, extra no. Aim. No, you wouldn't nope. be able to aim okay. because what are you aiming at? You don't know what you're going to see until you pop out. Yeah, I mint point. Uh... You totally don't want to be aiming in hyperspace because when you come out, who knows what's out there. True. Uh... Oh, man. I'm drawing blinks right now. I, I did send you the link in the Roll20 chat for Ooh. the cheat sheet if you wanted to look at that real quick. Yes, please. And is there anything special are you, that you're all doing while you have that six-hour rest break? Besides uh, going over the ship's systems and checking them all out. Um, Wishing you had time for target practice before actual mission time. Yeah, that would be nice, <laughs> but that's all right. We got this. <clears throat> Um, I'm going over the newest 
known empire codes and transmission protocols and things like that? I figured it wouldn't take that. Okay, anything particular you're looking for? Um, just to know whether or not we're successful. And I'm going to have to break in afterwards anyway. Okay, we well, haven't done the switch yet. You're about six hours away. so I'm... Right, no, no, I know. But I want to... Because the Empire Codes and things... They update them and change them. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, make sure that I've got the most current ones. Okay. Let me give you a hard roll with that. Um, it should be an average roll with an advantage because I've got that spy on that other ship. Mm, this is going to be above his pay grade. Because it's the it's the communication center you're you're going to be contacting with this buoy that you're checking with, not the person directly involved that you have contacts with. No, 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 no. It's not the it's not a person I have contacts with. I was able to get into the system and have it send me back all of its communication stuff. Remember? Mm -hmm. But so this... that's not a person. That's the that's the system sending me any updated code. Correct, but but that's with that ship. This doesn't oh, relate to that ship. Okay. This relates to the listening station. Okay, no problem. So unless you've been to this top secret listening station, no. which you probably haven't, there's always a chance you could have. But uh, unless you know, you, you've know you been to that station, you wouldn't have any, any extra advantage on that. But I did uh, hear a bippity bip. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see if I actually have been to that listening station. So That's apparently, whoever clicked something just now, it's saying it cannot find that character. So the name may not be in there correctly. Mm. No, it's me. It, oh, okay. I was trying to see if Sparky would activate, but you don't. <laughs> Aw. Um, not off the character sheet, or the ship sheet, so. Can... Okay, so... Oh, let me start with a hard knowledge check to see if I know about the buoy. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Go for it. Okay. So, in regards to the buoy, you have no clue on this buoy. But you do have a triumph. So, what would you like to use the tr for the tr triumph? Before you take a point of strain because you're checking your data pad and you're like, I had to have heard something about these buoys and you're finding nothing. <laughs> that was the day you played hooky to make out with that one soon to be Imperial officer who looked great in her <laughs> boots. Um. I mean, she looked really good in her boots that day. As Kay has a flashback of her walking away from him afterwards. <laughs> okay, um, for a triumph, what if I was somehow able to know any of the ships that were near that buoy and when they were planning to come by? Um, I couldn't give you ship because that would be too up to date and too erratic. Okay. But I could give you the most likely listening post that it could be connected to. Because remember, you won't know where it's transmitting to until you do the switcheroo, which is pretty much the first half of the mission. But oh. with that triumph, I could give you that you could say, due to what you know about ISV listening outposts, you think you know where this outpost is. Okay. Okay, so with that triumph, you are pretty damn sure that, you know, you're sitting at your computer doing the calculations and doing the math three times over, doing that whole, I, I, I think I know I'm right with this. 
And then mm-hmm. finally, you kind of come up with the information where you come up and you just kind of like go over to Sobek and you're like, Psst. Excuse me? Who? I mean, <laughs> not Sobek, <laughs> to, to Quinn and go, Psst, Quinn. And, and you know, I, I'm assuming he's willing to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not like you called him Sobek. <laughs> well. As you know, you basically say, I, I'm pretty sure this buoy is connected to this station. And you give him the Imperial coordinates. And according to, you know, known galactic records, this there's no listening po- post there. There's totally not a listening post on that secret jungle planet. <laughs> okay. But you're totally looking at him saying, yes, there's totally a listening post on that planet. Given the time lags between um, pings and replies, that seems to be the most logical place for it. Okay. I gotcha. And the poor guy's got a bead of sweat on his head a mile long because, you know, he was trying to get that information to you super fast. Yeah, no, I got him. I, I mean, yeah, he knows his uh, imperial stuff, so almost a little too well. <laughs> okay, right. so go ahead and rigor take the Nimbus. You should have control of it, and po- post the Nimbus where you would like it to be popped out in space. Uh, most likely within that circle, since you wanted to be that close within weapons systems firing. So like that? Jesus Christ, okay. Or not. <laughs> like, hey, I remember the circle being within these four parts, like here. Uh, wait, I'm not So sorry. this is the circle. As long as part oh, of your ship is within the circle, you're within weapons oh. range. So you I can totally like put here. it right on top. You can totally <laughs> land right on top of it. Okay. I, I, I... <laughs> okay. Where? So... I don't see the circle. I. That was he pinged it. He pinged so, yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So how far is is close? Okay, so we are close. Aha! There's ah. the circle. I have to uh, give you guys better. permission to see said circle. Okay. I'm glad <laughs> someone said they could not see a circle. Yeah, we well, only I ever saw the pink circle, but yeah, no, not the. That that's why I laughed when she landed right on top of it, practically. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, so you pull back on the hyperspace lever, the ship goes, and you just had this ominous rattle as you guys pop out of hyperspace. So everyone, uh, go ahead and roll me initiative, and um, you know this is coming, so feel free to roll your cool. Okay. And I should totally bring up the initiative tracker. Hold on a second. I'll give you a nice redo well, since help. we've got the last time up there still. Okay, go for it. Okay. And I'll roll mine in just one second. The one of three things it's good at. Woo! Well, so that's our that's our <laughs> range. Oh that's wow! Okay. <laughs> are, are you sure on, on that? I, I think your your secondary circle is a little bigger than it should be. Um, no, I guess it is there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, well, because it's fifteen thirty. I put sixty. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's got Death Star range. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I put sixty. Should be thirty. Sorry. So, there we go. So Black the stars. inner circles blasters, the outer circles missiles. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So actually, we're just out of blaster range, technically, if you're figuring it from the center of the ship. Um, add one more square because it looks like you're short on each side. One two. Yeah, because it's centering it from the ships. So. Yeah, it's putting it dead center. So I would just add uh, one more five foot 
ring, yeah, ring and it should fill up. You might have to put it to 25. Uh, there you go. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh. There you go. Okay. Just to help. So you guys <laughs> blast out of hyperspace. Somebody has to roll their initiative. Still looks like... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's me. Sorry. My bad. What are you doing? Cool. Yeah, uh, yep, because you know this is coming. As you guys are getting all ready in your, wow. your seats. Yeah, we're super ready. Not. Somebody was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we beat the probe. <laughs> That's the important thing. And yes, I'll let you guys go first. So you guys blast out of hyperspace. You see the probe oh, sitting there. It has its little imperial red blinky lights so it doesn't get hit by ship passing ships. You know, it's got a little green bar that keeps growing because it's it's downloading and uploading, you know, communications information. It's got a big ass communications tower. Who's going to go first? Well, I guess it needs to be shot first, right? <laughs> mhm. Mm all right. So I'm assuming so that's uh, two triple light blaster cannons to the front from a single gunnery station. I can fire both of those, correct? Uh, yep. But just remember, if you fire both, the other gunner can't fire them as well. Right. Well, he's playing with missiles to do his missile game. So, so well, plus we have the ion turret. Uh -huh. So... So I will fire both of the triple blaster cannons. Might as well make sure we take it out in one salvo if possible. Okay, so for the weapons, uh, it's you pick one of those turrets. So the forward one, the port one, or the starboard one. And it's got three right. barrels on it. Right, but there's dual forward. Uh, yep, there, there's two of them, but you can only shoot one. You, the guns themselves don't have linked. Okay. It's a triple gun, so that's why it's got linked too. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. It's just odd that they would have a two gunnery station then. But okay. All right. Let's see. So I will aim. Okay. I will add a blue. Yeah. And we'll do that. Or did you already click? You did, didn't you? I did, because I figured make life a little difficult. All right. Well, give me mine back then. Ah, I did. I just barely beat you. All I heard was one one click. Okay. All right. Bet you got my aim in there. Yeah. Yep. I got your aim in there. All right. All right. Here we go. As you come rocketing out, and apparently Quinn is not meant to be missed with here as he fires his gun, and you just see the, the three blaster bolts fire out, and one of them does hit. And what's your damage going to be? Uh, seven. Okay, so it does do some damage. But the probe is still there as two of the blasts go arcing over it and it's, it's, some of its armor vaporizes. Yep. It's almost like these things are meant to be hit by asteroids so they have some armor and toughness. Okay, so immediately the probe will notice That's you guys. That's strain there. Uh, yep, one, one, one point of strain for you. All right. As you stress, when you, you notice you just did a glancing blow on it, you know, it's it's still pretty intact. Maybe right, a we... quarter of it just got vaporized. All right. So we have a multiplier going on the uh, probe. <laughs> went to a four. What do you mean it went to a four? It's initiative. Oh, yeah, apparently. Let, let's fix that. I notice when you manually put stuff in for initiative, it does that a lot. Mm -hmm. 
probably because I typed minus four and I put that as a four instead. So it kind of uh, immediately turns around and looks at you guys and its weapon systems seem to be offline. Thanks to somebody's triumph. Look at that. And uh, it's going to go ahead and uh, do some computer stuff real quick. Mm. And so all of a sudden I need to pop up a quick thingy. That should be the thingy I need. As, wow, as apparently its little scanner dish starts, oh, no, what am I doing? Apparently I have I difficulty it, huh? dice on there. Oh, yeah. Let's get those out of there. I got excited that I found a character that would work for it, stat-wise. Yeah. It's just an average roll. As of course your sensors, wow, <laughs> that that got Good even job. worse. Yeah, As your sensors kind of detect a weak scanning going on, is all of a sudden it does a massive radar ping that it kind of like scuzzes out its you know computer scanner system, so it has no idea what ship is shooting at it. Damn, that sucked. But for its two advantage, uh, it's gonna go ahead and give. You guys, a black dice on your next action is your your targeting systems get this hazy snow as he just broadcast on the UHF band so loud it kind of waffled out everybody's televisions for two miles. <laughs> so who's going next? Okay, I guess you got to try to take it out. I changed one of the cannons to uh, listed for you so you can click it. And, um, and is that K? Or is that Rigor? If Rigor can shoot and kill it this round, I can put in the missiles. Uh, uh, we're in the gunning gunnery station, so... Okay. If you, I mean, if you look at the way... I don't know if the cockpit can do it or not, but, I mean, the way the crew loadout says, it's like captain, pilot, co-pilot, and two gunners. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, a little, little different than the Y wing. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, you gonna take that shot? So I will take that shot. Or do you want Rigor to do a stay on target for you and give you a bonus? Ooh. I can do that. <clears throat> That's true. And that's when I say, so rigored, you, you know what the stay on target maneuver is, right? Uh, sure. <clears throat> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. Okay, so what's that going to do f you know, when you fly? See how I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> Never lie to your game master. But I've heard it before. I didn't lie. Uh, stay on target is a pilot only thing that right. uh, basically you'll need to take a maneuver to get to speed. Right. And you can give a friend an upgrade on shooting on their next turn. Okay. Cool. All right. So do I need to get closer or is it just slowing down? Uh, no, uh, you would you would be hitting your gas and going forward. Okay. Going forward. Okay. Okay. How forward are we going to go? Pretty close. Uh... Are we doing diagonals or like... Yeah, you can do <laughs> diagonal. You can totally just do that. That. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, here. As long as you're making forward progress. Go ahead and move it. There oh, you yeah. go. So you're like pushing the sticks forward and you're going straight on target. Oh, where I originally jumped to. Stay okay. on target. Stay, Stay on, on target. target. Okay. So is our gunner going to aim as well? I'm going to double aim for a two strain. Ooh. Ooh. 
Okay, so you're double aiming. Just because I had an upgrade in there for the bad side, and I'll get you an upgrade for the good side. Okay, so she's staying on target for you. I'm praying that the dark side of the force, you know, pays off here. And this is the blasters, right? Right. Yep. Um, I mean, you could totally use the ion weapons. Good. Ooh. I mean, technically, the ion weapons do a little more damage. One point more. And it might have less strain than health, possibly. So but you tell us which one you're shooting. Okay, and, and if I roll really dual? good, it's linked. Yep. That's, that's what you're hoping for, is to get those advantages to have multiple barrels hit it. Yep, it's okay. twin, so yeah, you got linked. Okay, it's all, it's all in there for you. Roll well. Just... Hey, two advantage. Okay, uh, so you're... I got one success and two advantage, so... So you're... That's um, six damage twice. First shot's going to do six ion damage, and because of linked, it's going to do that six again, which conveniently, that second shot does its job, and you just see this lightning storm coat across the station. The little pod is, is it just shorts out, and all the lights wink out. Good job. Okay, so it's a good thing that Rigger gave you that stay on target there. So top yep. of the order, who's doing what? Okay. Okay, I'm, I want to go first, right? Okay. And well, send you, the, and, and you send the new probe out. You probably want someone else to launch the probe, so then you can do your computers oh, to activate the probe. Right. That way I can do, use my computers to activate it. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Then... I can do that. Uh, let's see. Forward, forward. Let me change my name to one of the forwards. And you're making an <sighs> easy shot. Yeah, I would hope I'm not really shooting at something. but <laughs> you're, you're, Well, you're just trying to get it into the same orbital spot that it's in. Yeah. We'll go ahead. Is and... there any way since since we got this with the ions instead of actually blasting it away? Is there any way we could capture this? Yeah, you could totally capture it. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Anea just skipped a breath when she saw what I did. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So the question is for for Kay there: How are you going to get it into the ship? Does anyone have a, a space-worthy suit of armor? Uh, yeah. Anybody with you? I mean, like I said, I have my uh, one suit. I got ten minutes of air, though. That's all. Hey, that's that's <laughs> perfect. You you can tie a, a cable around yourself, open the hatch from the cargo hole, and you can grab it and rodeo that sucker in there. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you can. Or we just open the the bay and with our wonderful pilot, she just slowly navigates it in. And Oh, but it would be easier for you to go out there and use coordination to lasso it and pull yourself back. I don't feel <laughs> great for the doctor to do that. Okay. You could always <laughs> open the hatch and see if you can scoop it up. That's totally a thing. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead and take yep. your shot for putting it into the same yep. kind of orbit. Yeah, uh, aim. Actually, I'll take strain to double aim. Okay, I got that in there for you. All right, let me. I'll take my. All you need is just quick. one success. All right, I can totally hope the red dice make something interesting happen. Yeah, you can hope. I can hope. It's a new hope. But it's still that. hope. <laughs> You're funny. So you kind of look and then type in the coordinates and then almost like as in Star Trek, you hit the firing button and your torpedo launches intelligently and wisely right to where you want it to stop. 
And you kind of, I'm assuming, look over at Kay and give him the nod. Yep. As the poor probe out there is, is still being electrocuted by an ion storm. <laughs> as it's out of the way. Green is good. <laughs> as your good probe is right there where it needs to be. And Kay, go ahead and... Yay! The Nimbus is using a destiny point. I like that. <laughs> nice. For the... And the, now the computer roll? Yep, go ahead and give me the computer roll. I've got a blue dice in there since you have the access codes and you know what you're doing. And wait, wait, let me give you your upgrade. Nimbus does count as one of you guys, so. <laughs> Go ahead and take that shot. Um. As he's clickety clacking on his keyboard. Just. Does does this count? This would count as decrypting communications, wouldn't it? Sure, I would say yes. Okay, so I'm going to use my code breaker to remove a black. Okay. Or to reduce difficulty of one. So which would you like to do? I'll tell you. There's no black. Okay, then I'll reduce the difficulty by one. Okay, go ahead and make that roll. Oh, now I gotta go back to the computer part. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, so you have two triumphs, enough successes to do many things over, and a advantage. So I'm going to say you have some time to think of what to do with the triumphs because we should probably take a quick five-minute bio break and get <laughs> beverages if you need them and time for you to think of what you would like to spend those two advantages on. Triumphs. I mean triumphs. And also I'm going to go run and get the power cord because I've only okay, got well, about I ten minutes of power left. What am I for if oh. I can Okay, I'll be right back because I'm about to okay. run out of power. Yep. Power. It's a good thing you did all that pre-studying, man. You got... So I think I would like to use one triumph to um, get it communicating to the right base in the right time. Right, right. You, uh, you notice the signal location and information off of the current probe and matched it up. <laughs> But I can't think of what I want to do with the second triumph. Um, well, you might uh, basically throw it to him that uh, some really good information happened to come across as you linked up. Oh, yeah, that's good. And I'm usually good at being fair and honest and giving us some good stuff. So yeah, just happened to like link up and link on and just as some critical information was coming across. No. Thank you. 
Actually works fairly well having the little uh, circles for ranges. Yep. Playing from G7 EQ. As I get back to the laptop in time to see the, your battery is low. Plug in now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not good. Dun, dun. The power of power. That's a great computer roll. Yeah. Well, that's all that studying he did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Knowledge is power. The power of triumph. Yeah. Or is that the power of big damn heroes? <laughs> okay, tell me when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Is everybody back back? Okay, so for the for the first triumph, I want to have timed it perfectly and aimed it right so that way it's set up exactly where I need it to to start transmitting to the listening station. Okay. And they don't even know anything about, you know, they, they can't tell that it's a different one. Okay, so you've got the, the signal overlay perfectly matched. Uh -huh. I like that. Okay. So and, then for, and then for the second triumph, I want to just have happened to have done it at the perfect time to know some highly classified information. That Ooh. happened to be coming through as it linked that on. Just, yeah. Okay, so when, when you get the information, you kind of like do some tap, tap, tap on the keyboard, and you're like, something's wrong. Tap, 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 tap. And you're basically trying to confirm the information that you just downloaded, and it seems off to you. So, of course, you immediately start busting out into the source code of the message saying, why is this not on standard imperialized, you know, numbers? And you're tap, tap, tapping really quick. And then all of a sudden you're realizing that the uh, communication station. As I really hope I muted myself in time to sneeze. Oh, yeah, I was like, we lost. The communication you. system just went out. That was two yeah. really loud sneezes, so I was really quick on the mute button there. As uh, you realize that uh, the station is using a MOF's private communications channel. Which you know from your Imperial training that uh, MOFs have their private channels that are basically off limits for anyone to use. Even ISB is not supposed to use them. So if a moth is using his private station for this relay, it's probably someone's private little project. Okay. Which is very interesting to you. I mean, it's not unknown amongst Imperials that sometimes moths have private projects, you know, because the Emperor's a jerk and like sub subcompartmentalizing projects like that. Because it's the best way to play Imperials off each other. Hi, I'm back. Welcome back. Oh, we had a ding-dong ditch just happen. Oh, no, again? Oh. Yeah, and this time I got to see who it was because I was upstairs. Ooh. I hope you guys nail whoever that is that's been doing that. Andy happened to be driving up and talked to the people who did it. So thanks. Nice. Oh. 
congratulations on busting them. Mm-hmm. Right. And she, uh, so I didn't get to hear this part, but she was like, oh, uh, you're really scary. Like, people are scaring my dogs. Do you know who it is? And as she was driving away, one of the kids said, I told you not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Little turds. <laughs> and it happens to be the kids that live right next door. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Little bastards. Yep. Because our dogs will, like, yell murder. They will lose their, their shit, yeah. Yeah. At the drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah. Even Franklin just leaving the bedroom, they will bark. So. <laughs> it's, in, it, they're, it's intense. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what Kay used one of his triumphs for was to have this saddle, the probe flawlessly replace the other one, and then his other one was he uncovered secret information on this pro- on the probe signal that uh, apparently it's a Moff's private channel. Ooh, okay. So the place where this signal goes is probably some Moff's private project. Which Jim is and good. his moss and Darce lately. What the hell? <laughs> they're, they're all about private projects. Totally not like the, 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 the other private project, though. That was that could have been something really cool for you guys, but nope. You didn't want to deliver your package. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, we pissed off a of Darth in another campaign. Oh. <laughs> they took a job to deliver a crate pearl, and they stole the crate pearl. And killed its favorite droid. Oh no! <laughs> After taking the money. Wow. <laughs> the question yeah. is, when's the next time U- not Uma is going to use that uh, bank account? <laughs> and don't forget, when they're at that cantina, I told you, that that console takes a face scan, just like in right. The Mandalorian. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're in a world of shit. <laughs> Eh, it just gives you guys another, another obligation on your list. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So uh, your your satellite is sending out the signal as as you were you know as mission parameters dictated, mm-hmm. and Kay's got some some weird looks on his face as he has some extra information. And along with that triumph, I will confirm that the planet you thought this thing was sending the signal to is in fact the correct planet. And, because you did roll two triumphs after all, you do get a ping when it sends the signal to the relay station and the relay station sends a ping back. Advi- you know, And basically you check this ping and it advises that the probe, any stored information on the probe deletes every two minutes. Mm. With a backup being made at that station. So the probe really doesn't do us any good then. Well, the probe well, lets you guys other, listen in. Right. No, oh, no, the uh, uh, the one we disabled. Oh, the, the, the decommissioned one. Well, I mean, it, it means we can do this again. Yeah, it means that you... I mean, we had to blow five up to get this one. And you guys have replaced it in two shots. <laughs> I mean, that, that does show how badass you guys are when you show up and have one that's just been ion stunned. Right. Text just need a day to take it apart and take out some uh, capacitors, and it's good to go. Mm. I suppose. Okay, so uh, Kay knows exactly where the information would have traveled if you want to go intercept that information. And uh, what did you want for that one advantage? Or would you like me to give you one more piece of information? Oh, I always want information. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, you you basically put in the coordinates for the base, and you get this basic schematic showing you the location of the base on the planet. Conveniently, the the little overlay map that pops up shows that it's a, a jungle planet, but you get basically like topography. That there's a river and a waterfall like less than 10 miles away from the base, as well as a indigenous village 
And it shows that the base is, as I'm going to like peek over and let you let you let you peek at the map. You know that this is the base of operations. That's the base itself. And the communications tower is over here. And you pretty much are getting the concept that the comm tower sends the info to the base and the base saves the information and then relays it through the comm tower. Okay. So any information, if you want to say destroy or, or capture whatever Sobek gave information wise or the Imperials transmitted, that would be on the actual base. Okay. But from now on, it will transmit it to us as well as whoever it's supposed to be transmitting to, correct? Correct. And this part of the mission has been pulled off flawlessly. Well, of course. Thunder Squadron. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Thunder Squadron does, they do correct and to the maximum efficiency, including traitors. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Gotta be good at everything, man. Right. All right. Um, so that means we have to infiltrate that base then. It's your call, boss. <laughs> well, I mean, that was the mission, right? To go... To, to get the information, yep. Reclaim the info, so... I guess. So who's the indigenous here? Uh, believe it or not, uh, if, are you going to do me a roll Xenology. for Xenology or Outer Rim? Um, probably Xenology for and me. And I'll give you yeah. a blue because you know the planet's location. Okay. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready if you're ready. All right. Okay, so you do your thing and... Um, hmm, what for the two strain? Yeah. Hmm, as you're just like, hmm. From what you were told, you were pretty sure that this was a... Uh, 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 un, you know, occupied planet, you know, that that's what you're too strain or, or about. It's all the vagueness of what you're hearing. As you're thinking, maybe that uh, it's the uh, Duros on the planet, because they're the, they're the ones that map the place out at one point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you don't know exactly what indigenous folks would be on that planet. Okay. As you're totally racking your brain for it. As I'm saving a map picture real quick. <laughs> As you know, Kay is figuring out that this base is called Whisper Base 5972. And you're totally like, oh, is this one of those Imperial Whisper Bases? I hate those. They're the worst. <laughs> and uh, if... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, okay, so what? Uh, what's the typical compliment on something like that? Because I'll let you do another uh, knowledge check. Oh, okay. Now that you've I'm got some... You got... I was going to say, I'm assuming you got better knowledge on that than I do, but... What? Well, well. Nope. Oh, wow. The purples were on fire there. So you take a point of strain as you're totally like whisper bases. Yeah, they've got so many different ones and so many different styles. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which type we're talking about here. Hmm. Okay. All right, well, I guess lock and load and let's go. But uh, you do have the coordinates. Um, wait a second. Can I send something through the probe to make them think that we're supposed to be coming? 
You can. I mean, what would you like to send? Um... Um, well, we, do we have supplies? Can we pretend to be a supply ship? You can pretend to be. We don't have anything on board, but sure. Other than our normal six months supply. Um... Or we could be really ballsy, say that we've heard that they have an update and are sending a ship to personally retrieve the information. Ooh, you're going to make it a hard deception check, aren't you? <laughs> or a maintenance crew, I don't know. Or a maintenance crew. How do you want to do it? I leave it to your expertise. It's going to be your deception. I can't I cannot help you there whatsoever okay. like it's, that almost sounded like a cop knocking on the windshield let's go right? yeah. let's go for the they're going to give us that's the my deception ability so I can't help you there <laughs> okay, let's 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 go for you. Give us the information because that's the best way to do it. We show up, they give it to us, we leave. Okay, right. I got okay. you, man. Okay, you're the expert in these areas. Okay, so you're basically going to send an information, you know, send the the data, you know, packet of information that your ship. The Nimbus is is there to uh, cover. Is it going to be like an ISB thing, or is it going to be just straight up Imperial? How deep is I, your lie? I would go with your eye. Um. Well, wait a second. If if this is a moth project, would the ISB know about it? Hmm. Give me a warfare roll, and I'll tell you. And that's just going to be average for you. And where are you using Okay, I'm not going to use the light flipped. side for this yeah. war roll. I was going to use the light side for the deception. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll save it for you. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. <laughs> I'm ready now. <laughs> you're ah! pretty sure that uh, in, uh, a moth would be very upset if ISB got involved in a private thing. Right. It could be a joint operation, but you're definitely getting the feeling that it's not a joint operation. Right, because otherwise, why would you need a secret channel? Yep. The secret so channel is basically like him bypassing ISB because ISB is everywhere. Uh -huh. So are we like special envoys for the moth? Is that what we're playing then? I'm glad you asked uh -huh. that question. Who would be who would be the people that the moth would send? Um, Am I able to know which moth? The moth of this sector, right? Um, it doesn't. It's not necessarily that same moth. You just know that it's a private moth channel. They purposely would not put their name to the channel, so that way, you know. Just in case someone gets caught, they're not the ones that get caught. You just know it's in the bandwidth that's that's reserved for, for Moff's private communications. It's like a Swiss bank account. Numbered accounts are safer that way. As you're getting the idea, if this is a Moff's private listening base to listen in on dirty conversations... That's just sort of misappropriation of imperial equipment. <laughs> so what deception are you going to go with? Uh, hold on. I think I might want to take another roll. I'm trying to figure out how. <laughs> <laughs> um, deeper and deeper and deeper. 
Can I make another education roll to try and figure out what Moff would be doing this? Mm, this this is going to be difficult. But yeah, you can if you want. Would it be education or something else? Like Underworld or... Uh, this is that that would probably be like a skullduggery or computers. You know, computers would mean that you're hacking the hacking. web to try to find it. Skullduggery is using dirty channels to find out. You know, if this guy is his, this is his one eight hundred Clio channel. If I can use, if I can use computers, I'll always use computers. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and use so your computers. So I'm trying to. Okay, so I'm trying to identify the moth by the communication style and code. Yeah, that doesn't sound difficult at all. <laughs> okay. You flipped Can it before I could... <laughs> Go ahead. You flipped it before I could say we, we'll use the light side for that. But... <laughs> Um, oh, but reduce, but take away a black or reduce the difficulty by one since I'm trying to break a code. Okay. What's the worst that happens is you start web surfing a Moss private channel. Yeah. As you go to Reddit, Reddit and there. say, anybody seen this channel active? <laughs> Star Wars Reddit. Yeah, Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, tell me when. Oh, go ahead. You're, you're good. Like I wow. said, you're good. Wow. There was a lot there to simulate at first. I was kind of panicking. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's Moff. Jerk in. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely know with your successes that did it in like nanoseconds tracking this guy down. It is Moff Tergus of Hosen Prime. One of those self-important nobles that became an imperial. Probably likes to listen to other people's conversations they're having while on the refresher. <clears throat> And what would you like to use that triumph for? <sighs> Choose um, your words wisely. Your search efforts go completely undetected. <laughs> Um, or you pull some kind of code out that they use while searching. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Some kind I'm of... going to I, I I I was able to figure out his code so well that I've pretty much cracked his code. Okay, so you know like his personal dirty secret uh, password? His swordfish? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know this guy's so paranoid, he's got a 12-digit long passcode that him, his droid, and his most trusted confidants know. Sweet. And because you did such a fast job, I will even give you that you pull the connector on your communications dashboard when those three threat pop up is all of a sudden you realize ISB is flagged your communications with the hollow net. Uh. It's that whole shit. They're tracking me and you reach under the counter and you pull out an important piece of the communications console and the comm just goes. Oh, at least it was ISB and not him. So that's good. <laughs> Well, it was at so, least ISB. Yeah. At least. It might take him a while to figure out exactly what's going on. So. And with your skills, the, you realize that if you guys get on the communications network again, it's possible they could be tracking for you. 
Okay, more good than bad. I was just curious to see who all heard you guys, you know, poking around what you shouldn't be. <laughs> Want to make sure if you're flagged or not for getting on the internet. Right. Okay. So, Kay's got this super secret passcode. He's got the uh, capacitor disabling your guys' communications at the moment. He can easily plug it back in, though. It's no biggie. How long would it take me to do the equivalent of changing enough things so that way it wasn't whoever I was pri previously? What do you mean, whoever you were previously? Well, you said that if I if I replugged in now, uh -huh. they know. So there's something like a home route or how they would know that it was the same person. So Base. there has to be a way to change the system so that way it doesn't seem like it's the same person. Basically, you would physically want to open up your data pad, pull out a piece, and replace it with another one. <laughs> Think of it like your SIM card on your cell phone. It's, it's, oh, okay. It's now, it's now tracked. At the moment, until you can replace it, anytime you plug in, they'll know where you are. They might not be able to so, react immediately, but they'll know you're up where you are eventually. Yeah. So here's my thought. We. So I don't have extra SIM cards? Uh, not unless you've bought some extra ones, which I don't think you have. Um, actually, I've got a data chip. Well, that's a data chip that's got information on it, right? No, it's a code breaker data thingy. Mm. You're talking a spike? Data spike? Oh, wait, I'm on the ship. Now I'm yes. on. Now I'm in my inventory. I've got a data breaker and a data spike. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a data spike is like a one-shot lockpick on an electronic thing. Yeah. You stick it in the little data port, and it drills in and unlocks it. Yeah, oh, and one. it only works once. Yeah, it's a it's a one-shot kind of deal. But it's not a chip. It's a it's a spike you put in and to do hacking mm -hmm. like a single hack um so that's okay we're, we're good what yeah, I, here's it's, what I it's not terribly terribly bad it's just that yeah. your your hacker pad is is been flagged yeah we we, we don't need it right now which by but... the way as as you know from a hacker point of view that's not a bad thing because you could always use it as a decoy too right totally yeah. give it to some chump hacker and let them get caught with it <laughs> I'm a bad so, person in real life. But for our mission, we're okay. So here's what I suggest: we uh, jump over to the spot off, you know, off the planet, and then we basically open up uh, ship to planet com, so we're not, you know, mm -hmm. broadcasting across the world. Just we're only just a local the communication. And then there we don't. So now we don't have to worry about anything. And then you tell your little lie and we go down and do our thing. Um, so we don't, that way they don't have time to do a lot of reaction waiting for us to get there. We, we show up, go, Hey, we're coming down to the planet. We're getting this and have it ready. Right. And this is so important that we're not even transmitting over the airways. Oh, we're, yeah, we're doing local, Comms, which would probably be expected from somebody operating from the off since he is so secretive that, you know, so yeah. Th that he wouldn't give too much of an announcement. Right. Okay, so uh, go ahead and rigor. You want to give me an astrogation check as you're like, okay, got the coordinates. It's a super quick jump. And Sparky can help. <laughs> Okay, Sparky's so there's, right. a, I mean, there's, there's a blue cut. and an upgrade. Yeah, two yellow and a green, so, you know, might as well. Any little help. Yep. And uh, Sparky and Rigor are, are both data padded in. So anytime you're ready, Rigor. I was on mute. Okay, hi. It's because <laughs> Rigor was busy talking to Sparky you know, over the... Over the uh, 
data port. Yeah. Not communicating, forgetting <laughs> us skin bags. Well, speaking non binary wow. is such a pain in the ass. I mean, right? All those wasted syllables. Right? <laughs> Boom, look at that. So, Yay! uh,. Astrogation like a champ. Anything special you want for those advantage or that triumph? Should I say that um, big damn triumph? <laughs> um. Uh. Oh, hold on. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh. I would like. So we're gonna we're. Are we landing on the planet, or are we just... We will have to land, right? They won't transmit it up, right? Yep. We're going to pick up right. a physical. You you have a feeling that they'd make you a physical copy there, but uh, asking for them to, tr you to transmit it to you would be on uh, what they would offer. Yeah. Okay, so we get there and surprise the hell out of them. Uh... God, what can you do with astrogation? <laughs> oh, God. You can I'm pop dangerously up. close to the planet's gravity well, you know, because you're yep. a big damn hotshot. Yeah. Right. Okay. So so you basically bypass any orbital defenses that they may have because it doesn't matter because you just bypass them all. Right. Okay. That makes more sense. And you guys, you know, pop out of hyperspace real quick. It's probably... Jim, wait. While we're doing that... I want to make my easy computer check to set up my holographic costume properly. Ooh. Okay. So what are you setting up as improper? Um, I know the moth. I know what his people should look like as far as uniforms go. Ooh. Regimental militaries. That's what you get for uniforms. Okay. okay. So go ahead and make your easy computer check. Wow. Okay, so easily you make the cost, you know, it, it takes you a few moments, but you, you fiddle with the, the collar and the controller for your costume until you dial it in really nice. Uh, what particular rank are you trying to go for, if any? Oh, what would be the appropriate rank for this? Not something high enough where it'd be specific where they'd know about it. Like um, a lieutenant? Yeah. Yeah, because we're just getting information, picking up something. I don't think they'd assign anybody too awful high, but at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. confident. Probably some up-and-coming officer hoping to score points. Right. Yeah. Of course you won't read it or make a copy of it. Of course. <laughs> So the question is, so you're, you're going to portray as that, but we got to go out and meet them on the tarmac or whatever to retrieve the information. No, I'm going to go out there. We're going to keep the engines going. They're going to give it well, to sure. me. Well, sure. I'm going to go back to the ship. Okay. But you're not going to be looking as that guy, so it's just... I'm, well, I'm going to be looking as that guy. That's what the holographic costume does. Oh, for your... That's right. You got a hollow thing. I yeah, was he's got. You're talking he, about. Yeah, no, I was thinking for his for like a hollow transmission. So sorry. Yep. Never mind. Yep. So he makes his out outfit turn into an imperial yep. officer's uniform. Yep. Yep. Nice. Okay, so you guys basically are getting ready to send the transmission. That's pure deception. So how complicated of a deception are you giving? And I'm giving you a free upgrade because you have the access codes. Okay. Um, and a blue. And apparently I'm giving you another upgrade because you're using a story <laughs> point. I like this. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not, done. I'm not done with all of my advantages on my um, holograph roll. Okay. Since I got so many advantages on my holograph roll... Can I actually pick, like, an individual person to look like? Well, the problem is that's going to be for you programming the suit. How do you know about the individual? 
I'm totally throwing that back at you to to to, to come up with something cool. Yeah, with the lost <laughs> command. Yeah. Um, during my search of the codes, I know his command staff. Okay. <laughs> and what's that gonna do for you? Um, that's going to give me like a lower level aid I can become. Okay. That, that he would probably that he would probably send on this mission. Okay. Perfect. I'll take that for three advantages. Okay, then the other two advantages I'm getting stunned back. Okay. Or strain. <laughs> strain, yeah. Okay, so you you are now Lieutenant Cor Corison. Nice. I'm sure your father is probably Korif. <laughs> Little Viking joke there. Okay, so you guys. I'm glad. I'm. I'm glad you sent it to me because originally I thought you said Lieutenant Corazon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going. Uh, that's too close a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Like that darling last name thing? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so what exactly is the lie you're going to tell? Um, It's actually going to be a real simple lie. I heard that they... Uh, I know that they've got the information, the new information on... um, uh, The new information. I'm sending Lieutenant Corison down there you need to give him a physical copy and have him come and you know and then go back to me it's going to be very quick they're just going to land you're going to give it to him and then he's going to come back okay so uh i've got your difficulty in there you've got two upgrades and a blue dice on your side go ahead okay. and give me your deception yeah sorry couldn't allow you a despair of chance in there. <laughs> I, I, I like how Quinn's making sure it's not an ambush waiting to happen. Right. My first mission is team lead. I'm not leading you into an ambush. <laughs> wow, maybe you're being or, led into an ambush. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> okay, so, so immediately you send the message. It sounds <sighs> totally legit. You like it. Go ahead and take a point of strain. Dude. All that work to make sure you didn't get a red dice in there and you still roll for basically a red dice. <laughs> Two red dice. Yeah, it's it's almost like you're rolling against whoever was receiving these orders. <laughs> Perhaps they were told other th orders originally and these are like countermanding to those orders. <sighs> At least that's what the threats say. They so of course... A competent asshole here. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> How dare they put someone in charge who can do their job? <laughs> so you see this beautiful lush green planet. There's this beautiful waterfall going down. You clearly see this imperial base. It stands out because they basically napalm the, the jungle side when they built this base originally. You see that it does have one of those imperial shuttles parked nicely on the landing pad. And immediately when you transmit the codes and information, you're told to go ahead and land in a clear designated area just off the main entrance. And that area happens to be right over. Let me click the right tool here. As they're basically asking you to land your ship here. What could go wrong? Oh, goodness. <laughs> so only one spacecraft, it appears? It, it appears to be only one spacecraft. You see, you know, from the outside, they've got shield generators here. They have a large hangar-looking facility here, which must have some vehicles. It's almost like they might have speeder bikes and add STs inside there. <laughs> Since this terrain on this planet would be perfect for ad STs. And, and immediately, you know, you get the signal saying, 
Lieutenant Collison, please, you know, come to the main entrance. And you see these, like, bo beacon lights lighting up, flashing. A security squad will be prepared to meet you and escort you to the computer facilities. Oh. Do you have your Imperial-issued data pad, or would you require a data spike for the information? Uh, reply that I'll need a data spike. Excellent. Please come to the main entrance. You will be escorted so we can provide the spike for you. Mm. And, and, and you kind of see these. For a pound. You see this very large door open up like an eighth of the way, and it's tall enough that at STs, you know, the chicken walkers could walk out the main door. <laughs> And you see a group of four stormtroopers and an Imperial military officer walk out with them. Didn't bring Spike out. All right. Oh, how? It's okay. Kay doesn't know about those threats. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but he still, we were hoping they brought the data spike out to us so we didn't have to go in. So now that's. that's... Um, actually, I'm going to say that we're in a hurry. We need to go back. You need to give the data spike to us. Oh, well, they're standing out the entrance. Are you going to walk over to them to ask them that? Oh. I really can't go out there because I mean, yeah, no, you're no, not no. turning your engines off, so it's not like they're going to walk into a spaceship's wake. That's just crazy time. Right. No, but yeah. I'm just trying to think going by yourself. Uh, you know, you could take Sparky. He is Imperial. Mm -hmm. He never changed his paint job, right? No, I left him as a an Imperial. And you could job, always black take Rigor, too. I mean, Rigor, you know, not all Imperial droids were given Imperial black and gold. True. Just oh, the sexy true. ones. <laughs> I can go so, with it if you want. Okay. Just that way, I'd just rather not have everybody, you know, have you completely by yourself. But right. So you're does that probably mean, a little better armed than Sparky. So yeah. <laughs> does that mean Quinn is popping into the pilot seat? Oh yeah, with with Sparky. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go with you. Okay, so they're waiting for you at the entrance, and they they do that nice, loud, proper heel click. As, and the stormtroopers put their weapons in presentation mode as, you know, say, Hello, Lieutenant. It is great to meet you. I... Hello. Where's the data spike? It is inside the command center being generated as we speak. If you would like to come with me, per protocol, we must have a nice pleasant conversation while we walk to the control room. And he gives you this, like, sly wink, like, you know, he's just trying to be funny with you. Per protocol, I need to get that data spike and get back as quickly as possible. Do you really want me to keep um, to keep them off waiting? Mm, so is that a leadership or a coercion role? <laughs> They're both the same and not very good. Is it a deception role then? There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's a deception roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so go ahead and make your deception roll as you're playing, you know, Imperial Stick Up the Ass. It, it's a classic character. Uh huh, and, and I flipped the. Uh, mm -hmm. I got the upgrade in there for you, yep. <laughs> Tell me when. Uh, go ahead. So your deception failed, and possibly something worse. But this is where you can be crafty with that triumph and save your ass like you're joking. Kind of playing the yuck it up kind of guy. You know, for the enlisted folks. Just laugh really you're, you're hard. You're purposely... Lying to try to yuck it up, kind of, 
Yeah. Because remember, he did shoot you that smile like there's an inside joke, maybe. Uh huh. Yeah. Roll yeah. With it. Okay. Let let let's roll with it. Okay, so your deception to be a hard ass completely rolls over him as he just starts to laugh. Like almost like there's an old buddy's joke there. And the uh the stormtroopers with him seem to be like outside what the joke is. And they're kind of like giving each other weird helmet shakes. You can't cuz you can't see their faces, <laughs> but you can see the fact that they're all looking at each other helmet-wise like what the fuck's going on? <laughs> As, you know, he, he kind of like just laughs and pats you on the shoulder and he's like, <laughs> your sister told me you're a funny one when you, when you like to throw your rank around. Oh, shit. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no. Did she tell you that we were engaged the last time we went to, you know, when I went back to Corellia? <laughs> I'm sure she didn't, because, you know, for all I know, she's engaged three or four more other officers. No, I... You know how things are. I haven't really been able to keep in touch with the family. And he gives you this quizzical look like, really? That was nice you know, duties <laughs> and being so busy. And he just gives you this look, like, "Oh well, oh well, well, well come along. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sh give you a rundown of the place. I mean, you never know. One day you could be stationed here too." Oh God! <laughs> Keep up, little droid. And he kind of pats Rigor on the head and says, "Troopers, follow along." And these four troopers snap into you know perfect cadence behind you guys. And he can, he comes taking you through the garage and say, Welcome to Whisper Base 472. Our mutual friends, private little rumor mongering station. And of course, you notice the stormtroopers are giving each other uncomfortable helmet twists. Because, you know, they're like, why are we telling this guy shit? You come walking in and you see there's rows of speeder bikes and some scout troopers, you know, meandering about. Two at STs parked on both sides. As you can see, we have enough weapons and munitions here to pacify any of the indigenous people. That should not be a concern of yours or your ship. You can tell your captains to turn off the engine. That You'll be fine while you're here. Save on that hypofuel, after all. And he kind of takes you through here and he's mind the stairs as he takes you up this little ramp and he says, <laughs> first step that we should probably be going to is to show you where, where you don't want to be. And he basically goes, you know, and gives you a tour of the control center. And of course, he, as mm -hmm. soon as he steps in, a bunch of comm officers stand immediately to attention and he's like, pip, pip, good job. These are my my control center agents. They monitor all of the airways. They said your pilot must be very good or you are very reckless. And since I know your sister, I know it's both. <laughs> As uh, you came in very hot, they said. Very hot. And he, he's saying hot in a way that makes you think he has no clue what he's talking about. And then let's take a tour here. And he takes you down and his guys all sit down and you hear him kind of mumble behind them, especially the poor troopers that are having to follow you guys. These are the barracks. We have enough facilities to man each of our you know, troopers and agents. We can house up to 49 troopers if necessary, but the conditions would be appalling. And then next, we have the armory, and he shows you that this is basically the armory that only he and the commander at arms of the stormtrooper squad have the keys for that. You see that there's a little uh, target range area, there's some, and he takes you the very long way over here going completely opposite of where you probably think you want to go. And he opens the door here showing that uh, this is my uh, personal shuttle. The Nylos. I know it's not as fancy as your civilian transport to keep you undercover, but it's it's nice to have a Lembit shuttle. And then, of course, we continue on our tour. Come, come, come. You, you mustn't fall behind. Wouldn't want the troopers pushing you along. And we have yeah. the mess hall. Would you like to stop for something to eat? Your astromech could be hungry after such a long trip. <laughs> <laughs> 
And he's serious about stopping for food, by the way. <laughs> Would you like to stop for food? Uh, how much do I know about Hazen Prime? Uh, probably not much. Go ahead and is give me a an... Core, is it a core world? It is a core world. If you'd like to roll knowledge core world, you can. <laughs> College... Uh, okay, Ready? with an upgrade. Yep. As you're just like, I apparently don't know enough. But what would you like for those two advantage? <laughs> um, for the two advantage, I'd like to... Uh, oh, um... <clears throat> You know, uh, you know how hyperspace. I uh, no, no food. No, unfortunately, no food and no alcohol. You know how the hyperspace gets to us. Okay, and he's like, "Aha! I, I understand. Your, your, your sister has told me about that before. I always thought Ooh. you just made that up to have more time away from me." And then he walks you through the kitchen and he basically shows you that he has on staff a Duros chef specially brought to him by our mutual friend. He is trained mainly in the cuisines of, of the old homeworld, if you like. And of course, you see this guy doing the whole hibachi thing, chopping up, you know, mm -hmm. you know, doing nice sushi rolls for the guys. And there's like some guys just like, yeah, look at him go. And then he, he proceeds to start taking you again on the roundabout way, not the way you came, path. And he's like, over here are the shield generators. You know how those things work. They, they make shields. And he brings you back to the... Uh, armory area as he's walking you around slightly different side this time and it's like well I wonder if they're probably done in the briefing room with your information I mean if you'd like we can gl gladly go to the training facility if you'd like to squeeze off some simulator blaster rounds oh as much fun as this is I'm afraid I can't oh very well then and then you know, he basically begrudgingly takes you into the briefing room, which is you know their 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 technical command and controls. You see a bunch of techs. They've got the uh, the low back style head cybernetics, so they can tra data transfer faster. And they're doing their thing. And he he comes in the door, and immediately you see like two two regular Imperial Army you know guys in the chest armor with blast rifles, and they kind of click their heels as soon as he walks in. He's like. Very well, very well. This is my good friend. He's a very good friend and is to be treated with respect. Lieutenant Corvson, my command staff. And the, the guys with the cybernetics are completely oblivious to you. They're just doing their, their, their computer slicing work. And you're totally jealous that you'd love to have one of those. <laughs> Pump your intel up one. That would be awesome. So, what is the beverage name of the day and he gives you this big exaggerated wink um, I broke the code do I know the beverage word of the day you have no idea what the hell he's talking about uh, I know it's a code <laughs> <laughs> as you can practice the rigor like turn to look up at you like huh I mean, we know that Sobek's really? gonna survive this you're mission. You're making us. You, 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 really, you're standing on protocol now. Ooh. You can offer the code. <laughs> As he kind of blinks at how how harsh you're being. Well, no, uh, that was supposed to be friendly. Oh, that was friendly. Friendly. Okay. That was like a ha ha. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. Now you're being, you know. British humor. Ha ha. The Corellian humor. <laughs> I said ha ha again, sir. 
Okay, okay. so are you going to try deception, coercion, or leadership? Let's see. Coercion's bad. Leadership's bad. <laughs> As you give what? out the safe word for rigor to go into combat mode and start electrifying <laughs> everything. Let's try deception. Okay. Uh huh. I counted to ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, fuck. <sighs> okay, so specifically, what is your failing deception? Just the ha ha joke? Yeah, just the ha ha joke. A and he immediately, when you throw out that ha ha joke, he gives you this stern look. And immediately take two points of strain as you're kind of like wilting from the look he gives you because he just like immediately goes from buddy old pal to dead shit serious look of like uh, uh, he, he may have just lost a family member. As he looks at you and says, we both know our mutual friend is not to be trifled with. These things co would cost us more than our lives. We would be lucky to lose those. As all of a sudden, this dark shadow grows on his face, leaving just his eyes lit up. Dun, da, da, da. As we screen swiped back at the ship, <laughs> at the Nimbus, what is uh, Quinn doing? I got uh, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack playing in the background, just kind of <laughs> chilling, watching, <laughs> waiting. You're envisioning Kay doing the <laughs> Star Lord finger fishing reel move to an Imperial officer. I mean, yeah, I mean, not much I can do. Just kind of sitting here anxiously waiting for. As Sparky's order. giving you that worried look of it's been a long time. Yeah, or a sign that shit's gone bad, I guess. Write him off. I mean, uh, um, Sparky's like, um, we can wait for him in orbit. <laughs> but yeah, tweaking everything, make sure everything's good, ready for an immediate liftoff. <laughs> okay, so you got the engines revving, everything's good. You're just like, this totally doesn't look suspicious. Vroom, 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 parked outside the bank. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So screen swipe back over to Rigger. What what are you doing at at uh, Kay's side there? As things are getting tense. Uh, shaking. No. <laughs> <laughs> as all of a sudden you start trembling. Do I have subliminal communication to Rigger? Because she's like, your partner. I mean, you guys have yeah. ridden together for quite a bit. There's quite a few one liners you can I probably say. Because I feel like I should be like pushing him to be because like I'm not. I don't know this relationship. I want to do the job. I don't want to be scrapped. So, <laughs> uh, the I'm like pushing on him, being like, "We don't have time." She we like don't have time. bumps your leg like a friendly dog. Yeah, <laughs> like making noises of like, "Hurry up!" <laughs> boo boo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, like, Kay, just, he just kind of looks at do. you and like, he's like, "Come on, I have a bottle of amazing." Corellian wine back in my my private quarters. Give the silly no. give the name of the silly beverage, and we'll uh, go go have have a sniff. Oh. King River, you think you can find it? Uh, find the the thing. Uh huh. The name. Uh huh. Uh, 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 potentially. <laughs> How would I do that? I don't know. Well, first you have to get into your ship. Then you have to pilot to the Moff's homeworld. Oh. <laughs> then find out what beverage he orders the most of at, a, at his private, you know, gondola. Then fly all the way back, tug on Kay's leg, and then print out, out of a little print report, a piece of paper with the, with the answer. Oh, so... <laughs> <laughs> I can't, like... 
right. There's no internet. Uh. He's in prime. Uh, I don't know enough about he's in prime. As there's just a long series of eye blinks between everyone and Kay. Right. Um... The, the problem is that I don't know because my memory's not all the way there, guys. What do you mean you um, don't know? The, you don't know the answer, period. You, d- I just made yeah. that question up. No, no, no. Like, no, I don't know how I would find out the answer. It would be monumentally difficult, especially since you're not yeah. plugged into the internet. Mm. That's what happens when you fail a threat. There was an extra step of the information transfer required, just in case. Part of those uh, despair, or not despairs, but the, the threats. Uh, threats that we got, yeah. Yeah. Lucky us. Um. Okay, so Kay, you have a feeling that this is your last attempt to bluff, coerce, or conjoil him into to, to giving you that data stick that a guy's holding five feet away ready to hand over with the uh, four stormtroopers behind you kind of standing uncomfortably shifting weight from one leg to another the two imperial army guys kind of squeaking their leather gloves synth leather leather gloves on their blasters and the commander kind of like getting a little annoyed that you're making him look bad in front of his troops good odds you got it you got it Okay. Okay. Um. I mean, the best part is at least you're not at zero, you know, destiny uh, points. Yeah. You could have been if someone hadn't clicked one. And Rigger's apparently clicking one for you. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm just, I want to be that annoying droid of like, no, we have something to do. But... So as everyone's like looking at you and everyone's blinking, the camera slows down to like fly speed as their all eyes all blink. All of a sudden you hear Rigger just go wee, wee, and she starts dancing from st- leg to leg. It's kind of a nervous t- twitch she's apparently developing, oh. but it looks kind of uh, interesting. I think your droid needs a memory wipe. It seems to be fidgety. A- and I will give you a blue dice for that since she's being a decoy and assisting you. <laughs> Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Um, let's. Okay. Where? Where am I? It's almost ah, like it's almost like the old spy tricks are the best spy tricks because they really do work. <laughs> Okay. Anyone can intercept an access code. Don't write down your password at your desk, kids. <laughs> a deception. So what is the deception that you were successfully pulling off? Um, the name of the, of the drink that's popped into my head. Okay. A hose and sunrise. A hose in sunrise. Because it reminds you of the wine he was talking about. That, that, that you know, it's the drink that uses some of that as a vital component. Right. Almost like you think he was hinting at the name in case you had forgotten it. Uh huh. As you take two additional strain, because you expected to get shot in the back of the head. Because when you closed your eyes, you imagined a stormtrooper already boarding his blaster <laughs> rifle there. Because if you were a stormtrooper, that's what you would have done. And, and he, he kind of immediately gives you that quick slap to the arm, like a buddy old chop from the old school. Goes over and snatches the data, the data spike, hands it to you and says, Now let's go to my quarters and get that drink. Of course. And, and he gladly takes you over to his private uh, quarters. You guys go pinging back this way. Conveniently, it's he's got one of these barracks rooms, but it's actually decorated nice, and it's made just for him. Mm-hmm. He's like, I, I do apologize for the confined quarters. And you see it's a room that could have easily held four people, and it's all his. And he kind of well, points... When you're, when, you're, when you're out here, one must have sacrifices. 
You are not incorrect there, my friend. So if you'd like to see my trophy kills, and he points to this wall and you see some assorted local flora and fauna that he has shot and mounted, because he's like that. I shot mm -hmm. that one for my personal ATST. So how is your how is your sister doing? Oh, like I said, she's the same as always. Ah, if only I'd have a chance to see her before I was was sent out this last time. Unfortunately, on this this godforsaken place, I'm not allowed to get communications out of here to see how she's doing. We have to send coded messages only. But hopefully I'll be able to get some shore leave soon and, and be able to head that direction to see her. Is she still with that one... What, what, what was her name? That one woman that she went to school with. I like how Quinn is typing and we're all waiting to find out what he's typing. Yeah. It's the curse of the dot, dot, dot. We see that there's a dot, 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 but we don't know what the dot, dot is. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so uh, now I'm assuming uh, Rigor has her communications on since she's got the long yeah. range communications. Yeah. Does uh, Rigor want to relay that message from your pilot? Yes. Very, like, we have somewhere to be, sir. Ooh. Do you say that, or do you say the pilot is saying the uh, flight plan window is, is shrinking? The flight plan window is shrinking. We need to leave, sir. Oh, your droid is so fussy. Mm. Well, she does keep me on time and make sure that I don't wind up in the nowhere of hyperspace, so... If you'd like, I can gladly have one of my technicians go give her an oil bath and a memory wipe, and oh, we can finish well, these drinks. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have the time. As my pilot says, we must be getting back. Oh, I understand. I understand. It's, it's just good, good seeing someone from, you know, from the old world, if you know what I mean. And he kind of Absolutely. pats you on the shoulder and hands you the bottle he just opened. And he <laughs> just says, see if you can put that inside your droid storage compartment so the enlisted folks don't see of, of course. And, you know, if there's something that you would like to, me to take to my sister, I might see her before you do. Nice. Oh, I, I, I would like to, but, you know, something should be kept discreet. I mean, you may be my brother-in-law soon. And he gives you this <laughs> dashing wink. I can only hope. Well, until I see you again, brother, and he pats you on the back like, like a long-lost friend. <clears throat> And then head off. Okay, immediately he opens the doors and he says, Sergeant, make sure he gets back to his ship safe, and I mean safe. And you may take the quick route. And the stormtrooper just does the, the copy. And he turns around and he says, With your permission, Lieutenant. Absolutely. And, and the four of them turn off. It's, it's the sergeant walking at your side with the other three flanking behind. And I'm assuming, you know, rigor following behind that. Mm -hmm. He takes you pretty quickly in a, in a nice, strong stormtrooper goose stepping speed. Because goose stepping stormtroopers is what you need. As they <laughs> head out the main door and they kind of stop okay. at the exact spot they waited for you. Okay, keep on going to the ship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, give them a salute, though. Oh, that would be the appropriate thing, right? Yep, that, that would be appropriate. Give him a salute. Okay, so go ahead and give me... I like that salute part. Give me a deception. As you do your best Imperial salute and acting your part. Um... Just a stormtrooper. How good could it is? 
Exactly. Well, wait a second. I was I was an Imperial cadet. I should know how to salute. Yeah. But this is you initiating the salute. It's kind of different. <laughs> Maybe there's that hesitation where you forgot that you were supposed to start the salute since you're the highest ranking one. Or they're just troopers and you really don't need to worry about saluting them, but, you know. <laughs> or you just give them that BS general salute where it's just a passing... Um, I, I like how you sweat and salute and stormtroopers. I like it. I like it a lot. I personally would have been like, "Fuck you! You're just." Well, I'm, I'm rolling away. Well, so. instead of instead of deception, how about a warfare? Okay, I'll take that. It, it's still going to be against their discipline, so. Well, well, yeah, that's fine. I'm just, you know. Okay. As as Rigger's totally saying, if he doesn't get up that ramp, don't what? worry about him. Yeah. Ah, the last light side point. Eh, I'm not going to give you the red. <laughs> you're you're going to totally give it to me as you guys are leaving. I like that even better. Uh, yep. So go ahead and make your roll. Okay, you turn around, you give him a good, crisp Imperial salute. The stormtroopers, unfortunately, know that they can't salute with with their weapons, but they they thump their chest with their blaster rifles and give you that 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 proud Imperial look of for the Empire. Some busy purples, and and they take another strain. Yep, you take another strain as you're trying not to uh, break character. As there's this like on one temple, it's just multiple beads of sweat slowly working their way down. Must as, be this as my hot jungle. Is quickly running through. It's it's this I, hot jungle planet. It takes a while to acclimate. Yes. Yeah, busy purples. Yep. <laughs> I am rolling up and telling Quinn that we need to leave immediately. <laughs> do, 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 yeah. do, do, no, do, do, as he's on the ramp, I'm like lifting up and closing the ramp as he's walking up it. <laughs> I'm going to my little seat, putting astrication in. Jesus. Okay, so whereabouts are you heading next? Where are you astrogating to? Um, a safe location that is not near wherever Pappy is. Okay. Just because yeah, I had all the that's points. That's why. Yeah, okay, yeah. go ahead and give me your astrogation. As you're like, I need a neutral corner of space to head to. Quinn is, is flying the ship going, wow, this thing really is a flying brick. Yeah. Kay is, you know, getting comfortable out of his Imperial co disguise. Uh, Sparky, want to help co-pilot? Do I get things with that? You mean an astrogation? Yeah, with yeah, the You're astrogating now, yep. so you're he'll actually... He'll give you a blue. Okay, cool. Help. Yay. Alright, ready? Yep. Look at that. See, you worried for nothing. I worry for everything. <laughs> As you guys get up into space and, uh, you know, all of a sudden one last short range comm comes up to your ship. Does Kay answer it? Um, I receive it. I don't know if I answer it yet. Okay, immediately it's a, my dear friend, I had one last thing I was going to ask before you, you know, you hit the hyperlands. If he doesn't say what he's saying, we're going to hit the hyperlinks. <laughs> I have one last message for you to tell our mutual friend when you see him shortly. Ooh. Ooh. And that is? So you open the channel? <laughs> you open the channel. Put your costume on and put, open the channel. <laughs> uh, you can do audio only. It's like Star Trek. Ah, audio. Yeah. Wait, if I do this, will the ISB people be on our channel? Uh, no, because it's just communicate. It's short range communications. Planet. Yeah, short range. Okay. Planet. Planet it's side. not the internet. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, audio only. When you see our mutual friend next, make sure to mention that uh, we would really go for another one of those sports and drink packages he sent last time. It did amazing things for morale for being stuck out in the ass end of space here. As well as, if you look in se section 4.3 of the data stick that you have, there's some 
scandalous hollow vids going back and forth between some friends of ours. He should look at those first. Bow, Am I going to get a virus? <laughs> <laughs> you just uh, might. Like you have protection. <laughs> you just might. <laughs> you know, they do have a, a data port, you know, protector that you can buy. <laughs> and, and of course, he waits for your response. Thank you, my friend. And you, you just close the channel? Yep. Wow, how rude. I'm uh, glad his sister's not that rude. At least she always has to get the last word. Okay, so you guys leave the gravity well. You know, you notice there's a little imperial defense platform. It's probably automated, but you guys are leaving before it's even cresting the side of the planet completely. Yep. You get to that hyperspace position. lane and you pop to hyperspace. So where is it that Rigor sent you guys? A, a safe area. <laughs> what do you mean by safe? Um, do we want to go to another planet or do we want to just go to like... I asked the big questions. Yeah. Uh, where would be a good place to go? It's it's space. I mean, there's, there's thousands of little ass and nowhere spots in space that you could just go okay. to. Uh, uh, I would just like to go to like... A asteroid field. Okay, so you go outside a nice, beautiful asteroid field that's not really being worked by the mining guild or, or yeah. any of the other groups out there. So, so you yeah. believe is clear, and obviously, thanks to your dice roll, is clear. Yes. Okay, so pretty much as you guys rip out of hyper into hyperspace, that's where the the credits come. Dun dun da 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 dun da 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 da. As you have a data stick with some dirty little secrets. And hopefully all the information that uh, your your friend gave to the Empire. Yeah. That way you can at least establish what he has and has not betrayed you guys for. Well, that took way too long, okay? <laughs> <We're worried. laughs> As you got a nice tour of the entire facility, including the refreshers. <laughs> Rigor can tell you he logged 10,000 steps. <laughs> I mean, your dear friend was actually going to take you on an ad ST ride across the planet to show you the sights. Jesus. <laughs> okay, so that's a good place to wrap it up there. And since you did succeed in your mission, 15 experience points. Woohoo! Yay. As your Mandalorian's off doing some like Mandalorian summer retreat, where uh -huh. you you believe he's doing like yoga and stuff, but he's actually doing like b bare knuckle fighting with with his clan mates, toughening them up. <laughs> and he says, "I wish I had a jet pack," as he gets punched <laughs> in the mouth. Ah, uh, he probably would have loved to have been on that maiden voyage. First, you yeah. learn to punch, then you learn to fly. Yeah. And then you learn to fall. <laughs> so I should get a bunch of duty for legend crafting, right? Well, did you actually legend craft any? I like created a whole new lieutenant out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you actually just this... borrowed the identity of someone who already exists. Well, yes. And you almost flubbed it a few times. Yes. <laughs> but in the end. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> what's that what, what what's that thing about anything you can walk away from? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and of course, you know, yes, you will get five uh duty. Make sure you you're keeping track of it. Yeah. And, of course, Rigor, you basically acquisitioned resources. That's one of your things, right? I think so, yeah. And I'll even say rescue and recovery for Quinn was one for, since you're recovering vital information. I was going to say, I was kind of reading through it, like, yeah, kind of potentially could fit. 
Yeah. Right. Well, then he rescued me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Saved all our asses. As this definitely falls within uh, Rigger's tech procurement, she re- helped procure a data spike. That's tech. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so you each get five duty since your duty pool is low, probably. Yeah. You've refreshed your duty. <sighs> All right, good job, guys. So, can 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 we look at the stick this week, or do you want to, or do we have to do it next week? That or would next, be a next, next game session, so I can come up with some stuff for you to find. Okay. Especially some apparently hollow skinny vids, uh, skin vids. <laughs> I'm like, what would they call them in Star Wars? Skin vids. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Hey, sometimes you have to send your loved ones messages over the holonet, and sometimes they're not—they're not all just Sith all roby and talking to their apprentices. Sometimes it's this ominous figure in a robe comes up to the hollow camera, and then all of a sudden drops the robe, and she's wearing nothing. <laughs> Followed by an equal video uh, from the we, other. Are we getting back into Tinder Squad again? As all of a sudden, a, a guy comes out dressed like a Jedi, and he pulls back the hood of his Jedi outfit and then pulls his Jedi belt off and exposes his lightsaber. <laughs> and it's got that horrible robot chicken uh, Star Wars on Ice song. Dun, 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 dun. If you've not seen the Use robot chicken the Star Wars, on me. if you've not seen it, you should see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, oh, the guys. Ship worked well. Yeah, the ship worked like a dream. It's been on no Imperial records, as opposed yeah. to your other one that might have been a problem with this mission. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Jesus. And obviously, flying in with a Y wing would have been kind of awkward. That yeah. totally yeah. would have been a park in the bushes and sneak your way in kind of thing. Yeah. Oh no, it's okay. We parked. We we used valet parking. We valet parked <laughs> our ships, and we walked up here because this beautiful summer weather on this planet is great for your skin. It takes all the pastiness out of the Corellan sun. Uh, yeah. So worked out well. All right. Just Go remember, team. when all is said and done, Moff Tarkin wore slippers during more, most of his filming. <laughs> So good job, guys. Good job. Yeah. So are you, just a quick question, are you um, recruiting for somebody else, or are we just going to run with uh, four? Uh, I have not recruited anybody else. I was actually going to ask the four of you guys if, if if you wanted me to, or if you had somebody in mind already. I do, but he can't do it. Uh. Yeah, it's Franklin. He goes to work at 11. so. And his yeah. shift, unfortunately, shifts a lot, too, which sucks. Yeah, the next one won't happen again until, like, fall. Hopefully, so, yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. But he would be on 6A, so he probably wouldn't really like doing a late night-ish yeah. thing. Between being up early and, oof. Yeah, and then the other choice was Andy, but she would have three games in a row, and I don't know. She already said no to that. So Yeah, <laughs> with, with homework and all, she, she's pushing it as, as she is with, with the free yeah. time. Yeah, but Franklin would have loved this game. And it just, it's sad because he would have to go to bed like as soon as he got home. And that's just not possible. And when you when you work out in the heat, that's not a good thing. No. Right. Yeah, I don't know anybody off the top of my head, but yeah. Okay. Eh, I, I can ask around, trust me. If I, if I really, really ask around, I'll get lots of yeses really fast. Yay. Oh. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to have one more. Yeah. Just to fill out the group just a bit. So we'll yeah, definitely no, no, no. throw out some feelers out there. Yay. Okay. So, and you missed out yesterday. That was some good. That was a good Lord of the Rings uh, session. Oh, uh, at the, the, the at the game store for the, the trivia night. Yeah, the the fourth round was a bitch. It was Wait. like random trivia outside. Night. Yeah, every Friday's uh, trivia. Yeah, TGG's that, uh, is, is open in the back bar now for, for trivia oh, and stuff. Trivia? They do. Oh. They try to do different theme things on each night. 
I love trivia. Okay. Yeah. So, like, last night was Lord of the Rings. So, yeah. like, the first, each of the three were the, the first three sessions were basically, like, each movie, mostly about the book or movies. And then the last one was, like, really obscure, like, character or actor type stuff. Oh, man. Dang it. I would like, love that. I'm really good at that. <laughs> well, it was like one of them was like, so, uh, what was it? Um, Gandalf, the actor, mm-hmm. has his staff on display in a bar that he owns. And it's like, mm-hmm. what's the name of the bar? Oh, that is very obscure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Apparently, the, what was it? The Grape? The Grape was the name of the bar? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was like grape or the grape or something. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, it was very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Yeah, because I yeah, just was, watched all those movies like a week ago. So. Yeah. No, it's good. We are, myself and a couple other guys are, a lot of times they're on the Fridays for that. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. Had some kids sitting at the table with us, started we, Mike uh, and I were talking, which we're military. We we're talking about some stuff, and he's like, "Oh, you guys military?" Like, yeah, I started talking to him. Nice. That's cool. He's apparently active Air Force crew chief on the A tens. He looked like he was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at a kid like, really? You're active? <laughs> like, did your mom know what you're doing? <laughs> did your parents sign your paperwork? <laughs> Like, literally looked like he was 12. I'm like, holy fuck. Just remember, <laughs> the older you get, the younger they look. <laughs> Seriously. Like, I don't know. What? He looked really young, man. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Man. Yeah. But no, it was a good night. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. So, right. the next game isn't in two weeks, right? Uh, yeah, Actually, that's a really good point, because it's fireworks in two weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, the 3rd of July is going to be fireworks. I believe the 3rd is the Air Force Base, because we're going to be doing their show for them. Yeah! Oh, that's... Oh, yeah. So, this year in Tucson, there's a show on the 2nd, the 3rd, and the 4th. There's going to be two shows at least. And I'm missing a mountain this year. I'm going to be shooting out in Saddlebrook Resort. Oh, damn. They have a, they usually have a nice show every year, so it's it's it's, yeah. it's I joke with my buddy Zach. It's the two um, with Gary. We it's the two of us that go out there and do the whole show, but it's <laughs> it's usually a pretty nice like thirty minute long show. Oh, right at the edge of the golf course where the golf course runs into the desert. Wow, that is nice. Last time we had a bunch of, like a little bobcat family watch us until the first show went off. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> So then they the disappear second? quickly. Uh, the second is going to be, I believe, Casino del Sol. Del Sol, okay. Because I was going to say, yeah, they're usually the one of the big ones. Yeah, they're I... our favorites because they put the most oh. money out there. That one was fun. Like, being yeah. behind the scenes for that. Oh, was... yeah. That, that You got to see us light the desert on fire. I was <laughs> where the fire was, yeah. Yep, because you were my cameraman that year. Yep. Nice. That was fun. It was fun. So... So are we going to move it off a week or just come back in, like, the 17th? Uh, we'll come back on the 17th because I do have the uh, the Cyberpunk game on the 10th. Ah, yeah. okay. Right. So we'll basically just take a, a month break. Nice. You, that'll wow. give us a month to replace somebody. See, that's plenty of time. You need to find a new home base. Yep, you, you got to find a new place for Pappy to set the ship down. <laughs> As it's flying around with your Y-wings attached going, hey, I hope they come back for these. I do too. Especially Riggers, it's all cherried out. <laughs> so, so a month off. All right, but that'll give us time to find somebody cool. Yeah. Because sadly, about this time, I'll have just finished breaking down the fireworks show. Yeah. And be yep. dead ass tired from being out in the heat all day. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the one thing we like with the casino show is we can actually go take a break in the casino to cool off. <laughs> well, that's nice. You know, we set up at one o'clock, and then we have like three hours to kill before the sun sets, and then it's try not to die while we're out there at the trucks, right? Yeah. And hopefully, not park the trucks where the debris falls, like that year that uh, Anaya was with us. 
literally we parked the rider truck with the, the extra, extra stuff for the next show the next day and that's where the fire starts yeah you no know, like down a, a tiny little hill and it was in the, the dark fire, <laughs> the fire people had to come in afterwards it was great yeah yeah explain that to the insurance company yeah how'd your vehicle burn down well <laughs> well you see we had a show the next day so it was in the back of the truck so you know these things happen don't worry we have placards nice on the truck we have pl placards on the truck so you know it's got explosives in it <laughs> and that's another reason why we love the casinos their fire crew love when we set stuff on fire so they can practice yeah nice, nice. they got there pretty damn quick after the show mm -hmm. and it was it was actually kind of fun Hey, those shows are nice. always a good time. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Would be fun. <laughs> are you saying if there's an open spot, you wouldn't mind a phone call? Uh, I want to film it again. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> would, would be fun, yes. I'm just hoping on the Air Force Base show, we don't have to go out there at 8 o'clock in the freaking morning and be locked up on base. Ooh. Oh, shit. Because yeah. we were just north of the uh, south entrance in the um, storage shit. area out there that used to be the golf course. Yeah. And that was a miserable, hot place to be. Really? They didn't have any kind of other, like, cool accommodations? No recovery vehicle, no outhouse, nothing. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Damn. That's why we it's... jokingly miss our old boss, Mickey. Before she retired, she used to bring her little uh, camper on the back of her truck so we could jump in the camper and crank up the AC. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised for an Air Force base. I mean, you know, usually kind of weenies and want it all comfy. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> they don't really supply us much because it's since the base pays for it, they're just like, you got to take care of yourself. We'll have three officers out here you know, on security for you, and that's about it. Wow. And it's really just because they want to get close and look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it's Still. up at A Mountain, there has to be a recovery vehicle because the A Mountain does the tenant shells that have to be buried five feet in sand. Yeah. Oh, sure. And that's not a fun job taking steel 10 inch wide tubes and burying these mortars in the sand. Yeah, wow. that doesn't sound fun. I like doing yes. fours, fives, and sixes because you just hammer these racks together and shoot out of them and then kick them apart. <laughs> right. 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 On the it was really cool to see it, though. Like, mm -hmm. the behind the scenes of what a fireworks show looks like. Oh, really the cool. shenaniganry. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah. I know, yeah. I still gotta yeah. dig up that video from last year, that year, because that came out really good showing the one camera pointed at the sky, one pointed at the ground, showing the rounds going up and exploding. Yeah, that was oh, really nice. cool. And then we burned some stuff. Because fire. Only some. Only a I mean, that makes, it, <laughs> that makes it exciting. I mean, that's always, you know, it's like a mountain. It's always the bed on, you know, how long in before the fire starts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You must burn the mountain. I don't care what they put on it. Some right. Sort of and as dry as it is this year, it's, yeah, it's going to be. Oh, yeah. And see, the important thing is all of our clients have paid for their show so far. So that's good to go. That's good. That's very good. As long as they've paid for their show, we have to just show up and set up and we get paid. Nice. What happens to their show after that? that that's not on us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sure they pay for the insurance, too, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. I'm going to head to bed. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Have a good night, guys. Night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.